I don't know, I always have trouble starting the video, but I'm gonna try my best to not drag it on for too long. Hello guys, first of all. Hello, how are you doing? Yay! I'm back from whatever you wanna call school. So today's video is about how to kill the old version of yourself and rebrand yourself realistically in 12 ways. And I got this video idea after watching Use of Truth's video on Instagram, so if you want to get a quick overview over the 12 ways, I recommend watching his video. But in this video, I'm going to explain each way more deeper and give you some tips as well. So stay tuned. And because it was helpful for me, I want to share how I do it, why it's important to do it, and how I motivate myself to keep doing them with you guys. And I will explain each way more elaborately so you can get a better insight on how you can apply these ways 11 ways into your life and routines and lifestyle i hope this will be helpful and before starting the video i would like to tell you all that i've opened a small business Louis shop yes it won't be open forever so if you're interested keep on listening to explain briefly i sell amigurumi plus beaded keychains shipping only in sweden sadly to know more it would mean a lot if you head over to my instagram account at and i'm also available on tiktok at there you can see the products, process, and prices of everything. There will also be discounts for the first few customers of every product, so hurry up. These are handmade by me, so it does take time and energy to do these cute keychains, but it's worth it. Just look at them. It would mean a lot if you guys could support me in any way. That's by buying, following, sharing, commenting, or liking. Even if you don't live in Sweden, I appreciate any type of support, as mentioned. There's also a limited quantity. By the time I'm editing this, every product is probably not live. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok to be one of the first to be updated. It feels weird speaking in Swedish. I hope these keychains will be of help to decorate a place just for you. Now, let's get started with the video. the first one is create a consistent sleep slash wake schedule so you can already tell what it's about so you have an approximate time of when you wake up and when you go to sleep i don't want to one day i'm sleeping at nine waking up at six and another i'm sleeping at two waking up at 11 you know that's like messed up because i don't like it okay but for me it really depends since i'm muslim and i pray and aisha is the last prayer and it really depends on the season. For example, during the winter, it, it's earlier and during the summer, it's later. So since it's summer right now, the sun goes down later. It's, it, it like never gets dark, okay? It never gets dark. So Isha is like at 12. So I sleep at like 12, 12.30 around that time. And yeah, we love that. Even on school days. Yeah, when I have school. But <laughs> now I don't have school. I'm free. You know, I'm free. Sasa, Sasa. So it really depends for me. But by now, it's pretty consistent. As of right now, I'm sleeping around 12 to 1 a.m. And I usually wake up at 9. It's just better for yourself. If you know approximately what time you sleep and what time you wake up. So you won't ruin your other routines. So it won't crash with your other routines. You want to eat breakfast at 9. But you wake up at 10 because you slept at 1. This is very like also, also subjective, if that's the right word. Everyone's routines are different, so you will sleep and wake up at different times, com like compared to me. The second one is no phone for the first slash last hour. Bonus points, no phone in bedroom. And the only thing I do is actually, to be fully honest with you guys, okay? We do with no lying in here. I only check snaps and answer them, but no more, usually. Okay, usually, since I don't have and many apps on my phone i've even i deleted snapchat on my phone and now i can't download it again <laughs> so i basically have nothing i don't have instagram no youtube no tiktok no games so basically my phone has turned into like a 70s phone okay but it actually feels fresh like and i really recommend it because you feel so fresh you feel like a newborn baby when you wake up and you don't want to ruin that by using the phone and feeling all crusty and I don't know what. Waking up and not doing the phone is easier for me than going to bed. And I did this a lot more during school because I had to wake up a certain time. So I had to set an alarm and I usually did that right before going to sleep. But some nights my sister put an alarm so I didn't have to. But the solution I have for myself and which you can also apply to yourself is 
put the alarm earlier you have set it and one hour has passed and now you're gonna go to sleep and you don't have to do the phone yay but if you also have an alarm clock that's even better okay and here's another tip to not look at my phone and start scrolling i turn off my phone completely so i hold the button and i just whoop bye this is just like to build my self-control but if you have good self-control then and the no phone in bedroom i've also done it before and since to check the time which i usually want to do the first thing i do when i wake up and i have a clock in my room in my bedroom but it's usually out of battery which it is right now as we're speaking because it is out of battery and i don't have my phone in the bedroom i have to get out of bed to check the time therefore it doesn't make me stay in bed i've always not prefer doing the phone in the morning the first thing in the morning like okay let your mind bring, <laughs> go drink some water or wash your face brush your teeth go to the toilet do some skincare like those are the first things you should do in the morning then after an hour of course you can check your phone the third one is use your phone only to create and learn and i think to myself before entering a social media app for what reason am i going on this app when i've done it i will not begin scrolling i will just leave the app a tip i have for you guys uh, two tips actually one from me and one that i see my sister doing the one for me is which i guess you've seen everywhere is the five second rule or to shorten it you can take the three second rule one two three four five leave the app and my sister's tip which <laughs> i actually think is pretty funny but also good like you can mix the two together so when she notices she's satisfied with her scrolling she just scrolls through like 10 videos and then leave the app that way it refrains you from entering this scrolling cycle then you can mix the two like you can scroll through the videos while you count to five or three and then you leave the app i hope you know what i mean yes you're welcome and if there's a hobby you have you can create and if it's for example writing you can search up sentence ideas expression ideas execution scene ideas or any ideas okay to help you start creating this is possible for everyone so firstly you learn and then you can start creating and that's the cycle create learn create learn learn create learn create you know so i think there should be a purpose do your job and then leave basically that saves you time and then you can use the time you would have used to scroll to something more beneficial the fourth way is to log a complaint journal because it kills your complaints. I honestly haven't thought of this. I never thought journaling was for me or something that helps me and I still don't really... I don't know, I'm, I'm still not sure what I think about it. But don't say something's not meant for you unless you've tried it. I have one that I've written in since the start of this year and it's not very consistent. <laughs> Hold on. First time I wrote in it was the 28th of December, then the 3rd of December last year. First January, then January, then January, then I was kind of consistent in January. <laughs> then we're on to the last day of February and basically 1st of March was the last day and then 13th of June. Oh my god, so consistent. <sighs> what, what, what do I write in? I didn't even... It was kind of annoying to write. <laughs> Sometimes I even forgot to write it. So I just wrote it when something special happened. I didn't write anything for three months. But a complaint journal might be easier since I probably won't have to write as much compared to a normal journal. So say you write a journal seven times a week. You may be right a complaint journal four times a week. Of course, it depends on how many complaints you have. You may have 50 complaints a day. Honestly, alhamdulillah, I don't have a lot of complaints. If I want to kill my complaints, I do it by talking with my mom or letting it out to someone. Just yapping on. That makes me cool off. That could also be one of the reasons why a complaint journal is good. If you don't have anyone to talk to or want to utter out your complaints to, you do it privately by writing it out. I think the important thing on this fourth way is find a way that suits you that kills your complaints. So you don't just let these complaints marinate inside your head. We all know it's unhealthy for your well-being and when you get to your last straw, God knows what you will do and say at that point. Maybe you'll say something to someone that you'll come to regret. Sometimes I, when I'm so angry, like I'm so, like all my days, like 
a fire will come out of my ears. Then I will start making du'as, meaning and invocation. It's an act of supplication. So you do you. Do your way. The fifth way is to make your default mindset the positive outcome. Because I wanted to fully understand what this meant and how I could apply this to myself and explain it to you guys, I wanted to get a brief explanation. And what better place to get that than from our bestie ChatGPT. I got this. Means training your mind to automatically focus on positive results and expect favorable outcomes in various situations. Instead of immediately anticipating problems or negative consequences, your default reaction becomes one of the optimism and confidence in achieving successful results. And to make it easier for yourself, develop and apply different strategies into your daily life to shift your mindset to naturally work towards and anticipate positive outcomes. Because they mention strategies, they also need to mention some examples. So how to actually make your default mindset the positive outcome to think in a more positive light. You can practice gratitude regularly. Take some time to acknowledge everything and appreciate the positive aspects of your life instead of the negative. Because if you think of the negative, like everyone has negative aspects of their life. So you're not gonna make yourself feel any better if you just think of the negative things. You're just going to get unmotivated and feel <laughs> while those negative aspects will inshallah turn out to be better aspects with time. And if you do something about it, even though there is darkness, there is always some light. This can shift your focus from problems to possibilities. Another strategy is visualize success, set clear goals, reframe negative thoughts. For example, instead of thinking, I can't do this, think I can learn to do this. Nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. By thinking this way, you will see the improvement and you'll feel immensely better. Like, you will never get perfect at it, but you'll get better at it. Like, there are times where we think negatively, but don't let that be your default mindset. There will be some negative thoughts that springs to your head and it's okay to process them. You need to process them, in fact, because you don't want to be a blindly optimistic person. That is called toxic positivity. Then when you're ready and healed, don't lock yourself in with these negative thoughts because that will only make yourself feel worse. And then just go on with your day and hopefully you feel lighter inside. The rest of the strategies are practice self-care, embrace challenge, stay present, learn from failures, and celebrate small wins. Negativity begins when people forget Allah. Quote, this is for the Muslims, but... Also non-Muslims, you know, you can get something out of this, I hope. So by remembering Allah, it gives us hope that it will be okay in the end. Because we know that Allah is merciful and most compassionate. So always have hope in Him. Know that it will be okay. This is just a test, meaning an opportunity for you to pass. And the more you pass, the more your rank will be elevated in Jannah, inshallah. Here are three out of many, many, many ayahs in the Quran that can motivate you. Way number six. 10 minutes of nature slash meditation. Sometimes when I feel like I'm consuming too much technology, example from my phone or my Mac, I leave it and go to our backyard. I usually watch our crops, watch the sky, the clouds, and just take a pause. I give myself time to think, appreciate, and be grateful. Do it. You'll feel a sense of calm, even if you don't feel it or notice it right away or at all. Pauses like these from time to time in life can make you stop and think about all the things you have and that you should be grateful for. As mentioned in the last way, one of the strategies were to practice gratitude and you can do this when you're taking these 10 minutes of nature or meditation. This is like a reset and a time to reflect. And during these times, ideas can also spring up because you don't have your phone to distract you from it. Your mind runs free in thought and that's what I think our generation is afraid of. By doing this, you can start to grow to your full potential. It has actually happened to me. It's usually in these moments where I do nothing and just zone out or go out to our backyard where I receive video ideas and other ideas and solutions, alhamdulillah. Like for example, if I have a small dilemma, then I usually just put the phone away, I go out and I think about it. Like if I let my mind just take a few steps at a time like we do when we walk we take one step after the other we are going towards our destination so can our mind our mind takes few a few steps at a time and it gets closer and closer and closer to a destination to a solution to our problem and don't forget that some destinations are further away than others so after this video throw your phone away or ipad or tv or laptop and just meditate or go out for a walk or just be in your backyard way seven is to move your body 45 minutes daily 
So my usual four or five minute movement of the day is going to the gym, which luckily takes about four or five minutes to one hour. But whether you exercise or not, there's something called active rest, which means a break from your usual training, which often involves focusing on other types of movement, such as low impact training, walking, cycling, stretching, and this is for the sake of recovering your body from the training the day before. Or another example of active rest, which I did last week, is paint. And I don't mean paint a picture. I mean that I helped painting our terrace, or part of our terrace actually, with my family. And which I kind of didn't want to do in the beginning because my body hurt from the workout that I did the day before. But I think that was just what I needed and not to lie down on the couch and pass out. Eighth way, listening to an Islamic series. YouTubers also count. So anyone can listen to an Islamic series, like Muslim or not. Maybe you have your own series that you're watching that's not Islam related, but something that you can benefit from and i admit sometimes it's hard not clicking on the next episode of a show you're watching but it's worth exchanging desire for knowledge so when for example i dry the dishes i usually like to watch a show but these past few days alhamdulillah i either not watched anything at all if it's not a lot of dishes or i've listened to an islamic series my series as of right now is the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a series by One Islam Productions. And my motivation to click on the series instead of the show is the thought that I receive something out of the series. I receive beneficial knowledge. I receive a better understanding of my religion. I get to know who my prophet is and I learn to love him and my religion even more, which I think is beneficial. Watching this show always and always and always is just because of my desire, curiosity and because it feeds me entertainment. That's literally its sole purpose. And I want the Islamic series to be a source of entertainment in the sense that I want to listen to what happens next. Like I want to know what happens next in the next episode of a show. And I don't mean to completely shut out other sources of entertainment. We just have to control how much we consume of it. And I usually like to listen to an episode a day instead of two, three or more episodes. And that way I have time to think about what I just listened to before I start the next episode the next day. And I'm working on to learn that listening to the series is not to cram and memorizing information like this is not school it's a way to just learn by listening and not taking notes by learning to do so i will more often want to listen to the episodes and i think this is the reason we're more eager to watch a show than listening to a series we click on the show for the purpose of just watching well we may after we subconsciously discuss what we watched with someone and we start to create theories and all that. And I think this should also be the case with listening to an Islamic series. Like you can also speak about what you listen to the same way you speak about what you've watched. But you have to find what you want to know more of and what you want to learn. And that's why I think it's good for us Muslims to focus on our deen and get to know our religion even more and i feel like that is what we should prioritize that's why it's good and beneficial for us to start an islamic series that we listen to daily then we have number nine no seed oils processed foods <laughs> way number nine no seed oils slash processed foods no chain restaurants i'm gonna try to explain as briefly as i can what seed oils are so it is basically plant-based cooking oils made from seeds of various plants and are usually used for cooking or baking. The process and how they're made is usually why they're said to be unhealthy and too much of anything is obviously never good. The process is they're made through a chemical process where they are bleached, refined and heated in order to be usable. Registered dietitian Julia Zampano explains. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. The common seed oils are canola oil, basically rapeseed oil, corn oil, and sunflower oil. These are processed oils, meaning they're also contained in processed foods, making these foods ultra processed, also known as highly processed foods. And that's why way number nine to rebrand yourself is saying you should avoid chain restaurants because for example the fries are being fried in a type of seed oil making them highly processed and unhealthy that's why these 
chain restaurants, all these fast food restaurants are so unhealthy because the oil they use to fry these foods are usually these seed oils. We have to acknowledge that it's almost impossible to not consume at least a bit of seed oils, but that's not dangerous. It gets dangerous when you consume too much of it, which I mentioned. If a certain food is high in oils that contain a lot of omega-6, you really want to try to avoid them or eat them only in moderation, aka not in an extreme amount, Zampano advises. The conclusion is that the smart thing to do is avoid processed foods. When you cut seed oils from your diet, what you're really doing is cutting out many processed foods. So basically cutting out processed foods equals cutting out seed oils. Some examples of processed foods are bread, breakfast cereal, savory snacks, meat products such as bacon, sausage, ham and salami, microwaved meals, cakes and biscuits. It's a move that will inherit inherent inherently in inherently it's a move that will inher it's a move that will inherently result in scaling back on seed oils while also allowing you the leeway to use them in small amounts i think zampano says that another tip they suggest on the site which i'm gonna link in the description is to increase your omega-3 intake and limit your omega-6 so cooking with alternative oils such as Avocado or olive oil is recommended. So, alhamdulillah, as for me, I don't like to eat a lot from chain restaurants to begin with. What makes it easier is that I don't have a lot of chain restaurants close to where I live. For example, McDonald's is the closest one, about 10 minutes to drive, which we all know that we should be avoiding by now. <laughs> AKA boycotting. And other chain restaurants are in another city. And I'm not about to drive 20 minutes to a chain restaurant because I'm hungry. I'll just eat whatever is in the fridge, okay? But not gonna lie, if I am in the city and these options are the case. One, I'm close to a chain restaurant. Two, I'm hungry. And three, we don't have anything at home. Then I don't think it's the end of the world if I consume it at times like these. The conclusion you can get of this way number nine is too much of anything is not good. Then you'll be good, inshallah, yay. Number 10, four hours of deep work towards business slash craft. To mention right away, four hours of deep work with short pauses in between. You gotta let that blood going and those bones to crack from time to time. Do things that are either self-care, reading, going for a walk, baking, cooking, doing some recovery, taking care of yourself, and basically taking a small rest by, by treating myself or doing other things that don't require too much energy for the next four hour session of hard work. Working hard is good, but resting is equally important, so you can for example use the weekends to rest. Maybe listen to an Islamic podcast at this rest. Wink, wink. Read the Quran, etc. I like hard work. I myself like to work hard. So I try to get procrastination out of the way. I'm not trying to be like, oh my god, I never procrastinate. I never chill out. I never relax. I no. I usually have a day or two for chilling. It's important or else you will be burned out and the results of your work will not make you satisfied. If it's something I'm passionate about, then it makes the work worth it and more enjoyable. Like always have in mind your intention of why you're doing this work and what your goal is. So if you don't already have something to work towards, then start today. Okay, as they say, it's never too late. I think it's good to have something in life to work for. You're gonna find life more interesting that way. And some crave more time than others. So you just gotta have hope the whole way, like all the way from day one to day, God knows what day. So just be passionate about it and if it doesn't go your way, don't lose hope or give up. Sometimes it's not as we expected and that's okay, we learn from that. Working hard is a type of ibadah, it's a type of worship. Everything you do is a type of worship. Don't think that ibadah is only making dua on the prayer mat or in the mosque. It's everything you do, basically. What you eat, how you speak with people, what you do for people. Every step you take towards something good. Everything you do to make things better, especially for those around you. These are types of ibadah. But always remember your intention. As they say, make dua if you want something. And trust that Allah will either give it to you later in life, in the next life, or something better. But they also say that you shouldn't only make dua for something you want. You also have to work for it. You have to put some effort into it. Then it will feel more worth it. To mention that the Prophet Wasallam's companion Umar anhu said, Never should any one of you think that dua, supplication for sustenance without work, will avail him. For heaven never rains gold nor silver. 
Now, we're on the, not the last one. What is the second to last one? Way number 11. Donate money. Friday for extra ajr. Actually, I don't know what ajr is. So I'm just gonna search it up. Even though I searched it up before, but I still don't know what it means. Borrowed from a rabbi and it has to not. Oh. Huh? Reward. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we Muslims believe that there is extra reward if you donate on Fridays. I want to make it clear that if I have donated or not, it is between me and Allah. And I won't say whether I have or not and so shouldn't you guys. That Allah knows that you're doing it with a great intention and for a good cause. And that's enough. Always keep that in mind, guys. Never do it arrogantly and to look good. Those who Allah has blessed with wealth, it is always good to donate a portion of that to those in need. Donating it secretly and publicly is both permissible in Islam. Islam supports giving charity in private as the best form of giving, but there's something to be said about giving it publicly, as long as one is aware of their intentions and behavior, as I mentioned before. To read more about what to keep in mind while giving it secretly or publicly, I will share a link in the description below so you can read it. So there isn't much to say, um, just keep in mind those things that I mentioned and inshallah you'll be good before you donate just know who you're donating to do the research and when you're sure that this is a reliable site and this is a place that you can trust then go ahead and donate how much you want and we're on the last one way number 12 actively have a good conversation with a friend mentor or father figure slash mother figure I think by letting out, talking, and having a good conversation with an interested and engaging person can make you feel lighter inside. And it's not just about yourself, but about the relationship you develop with that person when you actively share conversations together. You become closer and you get to know each other better. This makes a certain person someone you know you can turn to at good or hard times. I asked Sajibiti, of course, <laughs> you already know. For more reasons as to why this can have a positive effect on your well-being and personal development. And this is what I got. Emotional support. Validation. So by sharing your thoughts and feelings, it can help you feel understood and validated. As well as stress relief. Talking about your problems can reduce stress and anxiety. There is also perspective and advice. Strengthening relationships, as I mentioned. Personal growth. Mental health benefits such as reduced isolation and mood improvement, and social skills. These are just a few. Try to find this person in your life. If you don't have, you can always... Burr, I'm here for you, girl. If you don't have this person in your life, you can always comment down below what you want to talk about, and I'll be happy to have a little virtual conversation with you girlies. Anyways, just remember to be grateful and keep the good people in your life. Know who you can trust, and... Um, Keep the ones that are willing to spend time with you and find that time spent worth it. So these were all 12 ways of how you can kill the old version of yourself and rebrand yourself. Realistically, hopefully, you'll imply all or even some of these into your daily life and see an improvement. But remember to not rush it, but also don't slack. And hopefully we will all work to better ourselves and not lose hope when something unexpected happens. Now I hope you will take care. And be happy and go into nature, go work hard, go to the gym, go talk with someone, go have a good conversation with someone, do something good. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. For indeed, with hardship will be ease. Indeed, with hardship will be ease.